Welcome back to Hoochos. Today on Hoochos, these. These are 196 cubes of rock wool that cost two and a half cents a piece. I'll show you how to do it. Now, if you've tried to purchase rock wool plugs or starter cubes for using in propagation of your own seeds hydroponically at home, you've probably noticed that they're not cheap. 50 cents a cube or 20 cents a cube, that's still expensive when you're trying to rear your own plants. What we can do, however, is leverage the buying power of large companies to benefit us as home growers. These Coltilene Exact Air Grow Slabs, which is just a competing brand of grow down rock wool essentially, cost me five Australian dollars a piece. I saw these slabs from EE Muir and Sons. That's the same supply store that I get my hydroponic nutrient in bulk from, and I'll have a video coming up on that soon. But they buy these in bulk for growers around Australia. For the Grodan Rockwell slabs in America, I'll leave a link in the description to where you can purchase those. If you, as a grower in the United States, know of where you can get these in bulk for cheap, please leave a comment below and I'll update that information on the Hucho subreddit and the Facebook group as well as in the description of this video. So today we're going to turn one of these slabs into 196 cubes of rock wool and then we're going to use those cubes in a time-lapse grow to show that the method works. Let's get to it. So to start with, we're gonna take one of our Coltilene rock wool slabs. We're just gonna cut open our slab, like so. We're gonna put it on its side, and then we're gonna make an incision along the length of the slab. Now, where I got this idea was from in the advanced hydroponic facility time-lapse at the end where I dissected the cube, uh, I figured out that knives cut through grow wool like cake, essentially. And I reckon it won't affect the consistency of the grow wool enough that we'll see any large difference in germination rates. So I'm gonna cut up this slab and we'll see how it goes. So I'm just gonna cut it down the middle because this is about two grow cubes height, which is perfect. Make sure you use a really sharp knife for this. Now I'm just gonna cut it up into cubes. Once you've finished cutting up the rock wall cubes, it's just a matter of soaking them and then draining them, uh, getting rid of the excess water and preparing to plant the seeds. So to do this, all I did was make small incisions in the top of all of the cubes. And in those incisions, you can pop your seeds straight in. We can then put a humidity dome over the top and place it under lights. Would you look at that result? They are some healthy seedlings. And I, I, I actually think that it's a combination of the light that I'm using for them, as well as the rock wall uh, and the feeding from below technique. So the light I'm using is the Spider Farmer SF600, and I'm gonna go ahead and recommend it for this purpose. Uh, it's performed amazingly and I've actually gone and bought myself a second one with my own money. So the SF600 will fit two of these trays 
And this is the one I purchased with my own money uh, just to get an extra tray's worth. Uh, that'll fit one tray under it. These are just full-size hydroponic propagation trays uh, that separate. They have a drainage top and uh, this wicking res, I guess. These are peat pellets that I was using. As you can see, the germination rate um, is way better in the rock wool. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the peat pellets. There just doesn't seem to be enough oxygenation. Uh, they get too waterlogged. They do have their place, and I've been experimenting with them just to figure out where they fit or can fit in my seed raising regimen. No unboxing for this light. I bought it myself, so there's no product placement here. It's literally just me going, this is a cool light. This is how I produce this result. So using this method of creating uh, multiple rockwool cubes out of the one slab, uh, you can see that it handles propagation exactly the same as your starter cubes. Now, there is one difference. I've only got one cube where the seeds failed, but the difference between the rockwool cubes and these rockwool slabs that are cut into cubes, they are a lot more layered than the cubes, but that doesn't make any difference in the germination rate, as you can see. If you are planting them in a system like this, I would definitely have them a little bit more separated than I have with larger gaps in between each as the roots are jumping from rock wall cube to rock wall cube. If I pull out this cucumber, which is a notoriously rooty plant, is that a word? You can see that the roots have traveled over into the other cubes, but look at that. That's root penetration throughout that cube. And if I left that longer, that would definitely take up that whole rock wall cube. That is some really consistent propagation medium. Here again, you can see that the cucumber roots have gone over into the next rock wall cube. Um, so we don't want that. Uh, we, we want them to air prune around the cube. A bit of distance between the cubes uh, will help them air prune and will allow that seedling to take up the entire space within that rock wall cube before transplant. And even the lettuce uh, has started to send roots throughout the entire cube. All right, thank you for joining me today on Who Chose. If you enjoyed it, give me a thumbs up and a subscribe. Consider joining me on Patreon. I'm so close to putting out videos in a full-time manner. Uh, every little bit helps and I really appreciate it. Happy hydroponicking and I'll see you next time on Who Chose. <laughs>